Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome back to the workshop where we're going to continue with our series of videos based on the honey pour polystyrene Langstroth hives. This is our season long series of videos that we're going to be producing for this year. And uh, honey pour have supplied us with all of the equipment that we're going to be showing you over this season. And today we're going to take a look at the uh, deep brood box that we've been supplied and this is going to be the mainstay of the beehives that we've got for this year. We've got two different types of boxes and uh, the one that we traditionally use for our honey supers is called a medium which is the box in in the front and this is one that we've had for a few years now and if I just lift the nucleus brood box off, you can see the difference in depth that we've got here. Now there is a third box which is called a shallow, which we would really look at as more of a super here in the UK. So you've got three different size boxes. Ideally, uh, I think the medium works really well as a honey production super. Uh, it's got quite a nice slightly deeper frame uh, and if you wanted to uh, and what we're going to try this year is using the deep uh, to produce honey as well so you could just go with one box so you could have maybe two medium boxes as your brood area with a queen excluder on top and then if you wanted you could have more mediums on top of that or you could go with the deep box and then have mediums on top of that. Or if you wanted to go with the supers, you could just use the very narrow supers. Uh, what we're going to do this year, certainly to start with, is we're gonna go completely with the deep boxes because although once they're full of bees and, and have honey in them, they're going to be relatively heavy because of the polystyrene material, which is a really good high density polystyrene. It's still very lightweight. so. Uh, as I've mentioned before, I have a, a bad back problem, which means that I'm looking for light materials to use in the beehives. So today what I want to do is to just put this um, box together. We've got quite a lot of boxes to, to build and I won't bore you with all of uh, the building process, but I'll just clear away the worktop here and we'll show you how to build this particular box. It's very, very straightforward. And then once we've made this up, we'll build the rest and we'll perhaps put a time-lapse video together to show you that, and then we'll catch up at the end. So when you get your flat-packed brood box, your deep Langstroth poly box from Honeypore, this is what you'll get. Two runners, two ends with slots for the runners, and two sides. And that's it. And it's very much like the nuke box. You just push everything together once you've glued it. And as I said before, I would recommend that you glue uh, and, and then stick them together. Just gives you a bit more solidity in, in the box construction. So the first thing to do is to pop in the runners. You could glue these. I like to put them in because the gap that's preformed has got little bumps running along it. The um, extruded runner fits in really tightly, so you don't need to glue this in. And the benefit of that is that you can use your hive tool just to pop it out when it comes to cleaning. And I always like to remove the runners with whatever boxes that I'm, I'm using, whether it's wood or polystyrene. I like to remove the runners in order to clean properly. So all we're going to do is to fit these runners and then glue everything together, push it all together, make sure it's square, and it's job done. So let's crack on with that. So the first task is to pop in the runners, and they literally slip in at the top here. Now it's quite a firm fit, so you can just push them in manually, or you can use a piece of board and just tap them in, which is what I'll do. So now the runner is nice and tight against the side of the 
polystyrene and that's really important because if you allow a gap behind it then what will happen is when you put the frames in it'll be quite tight to push the frames in so make sure that that's nice and tight against the side. So we'll just do the second one. So we'll push it in as far as we can. And again, nice tight fit and that's the runner fitted. So the next task is to just pop some glue along the side of the ends inside the joint and you don't want to put too much glue in because what will happen is this will expand and then you'll end up having to clean it all off. And really it's such a good fitting joint anyway it doesn't need a huge amount of glue. So that's all the glue in position. The next task is to just wet the faces of the sides so that when they touch the glue that will help cure the glue. It doesn't have to be much, just gently get the faces of the polystyrene wet. And then making sure that the Honeypaw logo is facing up, so it's the top, we can pop it into the section and just push down and you can see how easy that is to, to push into fitting. And then the same with the other side. Again, make sure that it's the right way up and then that can slide in on the other side. That's fitting really well. And then we just bring the next one in. A little bit of water on this particular joint area on both sides. ready to push this into position as well. And there we've got our box pushed together. So we've pushed the box together and we just need to make sure that the joints are nice and tight now. Uh, sometimes the, the polystyrene is a nice tight fit and sometimes, as you can see here, um, I can't physically push it as hard as I'd like to. So we just use the mallet and a piece of wood use the wood to protect the side of the polystyrene and then we can just tap it into place.
And that is our box made. It's really not difficult at all. It won't go out of alignment, so it's nice and square because it's pre-moulded to be square. So it's not like putting together, say, a, a national brood box where if you get the nailing wrong, you can sometimes have it out of square and frames run away from true squareness in the box itself. So this is nice and square. All we now need to do is to wait for the glue to go off and then we can paint them. So we're going to crack on with making up the rest of these boxes and we'll shoot a little bit of video showing the stack growing and then we'll catch up at the end. So you can see we've created all of these boxes. It's taken us probably an hour and a half to build 36 boxes plus three nukes. So it takes no time at all. Uh, the glue's all dried and they can be painted now. Uh, so the next step is painting. Uh, we've got, hopefully, uh, a crew of volunteers coming over to help with the painting, so that'll be quite good. And then we'll get into the detail of what the rest of the equipment does. We've got different types of floors, we've got different types of roofs. All of this equipment is available online. You can go to the Honeypore website and have a look at it there and con contact them directly if you're outside the UK. If you're inside the UK, then talk to Paul at Modern Beekeeping. Paul also runs Happy Valley Honey, uh, but all of this product is going to be available on the Modern Beekeeping website and I'll put a link to all of the various websites in the description below the video and also we'll link it through on my website as well so we'll have plenty of links for you to be able to go through and take a look at it. We're going to just stack this lot ready for painting now and get prepared. We've got the paint ready so we'll catch up when we're going through the painting process uh, but that's it for today. Thanks for watching and we'll catch up next time.